So season 10 is around the corner. As you see, we're in the top 10, number 5 to be more precise. We can't even get a season where we win the national championship and start off as the number one team in the country. That's crazy, man. So as you saw, Texas A&M is number one once again. Number one team in the country. They had a great offseason. I believe they had the number one recruiting class. And I think Texas Tech was number two. But y'all know the expectations for those Texas schools, it's going to be very big in the next three, four seasons. So we got some breaking news outside of Gump Town, Alabama. One of y'all favorite players is coming back for his senior season. And I'm very shocked that he didn't declare for the draft. Steve Urkel Bostic, the Mississippi Dash, is returning for his senior season. This is big news for us. We get to keep our running back unit intact. We go three deep, and then we got a red shirt freshman coming in who's going to be the next best thing, hopefully a power back out of Fairfield, Alabama. But right now, it's all about Steve Urkel Bostic. He will be returning for his senior season. He had over 1,600 yards rushing along with 18 touchdowns last season. But here's another reason he's coming back. He's on the Heisman watch list. You see it right there. He's starting off number four on the Heisman watch list. The Mississippi Dash is looking to have a big season in his senior season. And he's looking to catch the eye of a lot of NFL scouts. And he's not alone either. He has two other backs that he has to work with. So let's go over to the preseason All-Americans. You see Steve Urkel Bosick after the season he had last year. And he is the favorite to win the Dope Walker Award this season. It will be a shame if he doesn't. He should have won it last year. He should have been a candidate. But unfortunately for us, he wasn't. So you see Phillip Sims, the middle linebacker for Alcorn State. You see Ryan Anderson. He was a Jim Thorpe Award finalist last season. He didn't catch his first interception until the national championship game. Let's go over to the preseason all swag players. You see Steve Furkle Bostic, Justin Frankie Beverly and Mays, and Sheldon Money Green. I know two of the three are seniors, and both of them are looking to have big seasons this year. So as we go further down the list, man, I must say I'm looking forward to season 10, but I'm also looking forward to getting this NCAA Nets up. I'm having some trouble, though, man. Y'all going to have to be patient with me on that. So we go over to the defense. And as you see, we don't have a lot of people on defense. We had a lot of players leave on defense and offense. But you do see Ryan Anderson right there. Now, as we look down the second team for all SWAT preseason, I'm letting y'all know now that the only player we had pop up on this list was Rashawn Pearson, our returning defensive end. He should be a junior now. He had eight sacks last season. But this season, you're going to see a lot of new faces at different positions. As I told somebody in the comment section, my biggest concern is offensive line and the safety positions. We have no experience at these safety positions. And then on the offensive line, we have little to no experience whatsoever. Oh, I forgot about Houston, our kicker. He made the list. So we start off again. We finished the uh, recruiting season with the third best class in the country. So Texas Tech was actually number one. Texas A&M was actually number two. My bad on that one. So let's meet the team for season 10. The starting quarterback this season will be Dan Finnerty. That's right. He started one game last season. Remember, that was the game against Texas Southern where we struggled. Deadpool had a concussion from the previous game versus Bethune Cookman, and he had to take over. Dan Finnerty is a pocket passer. That's his tendency. Not very mobile, but has a very good, accurate arm similar to Trey Tyler. Now, we're looking for Dan Finnerty to have a good, decent season for us. We want to depend more on the run, but hopefully we won't have to. Hopefully we can continue to slay that thing, pause, like we used to. So Dan Finnerty comes in at 93 overall. As you see, he's considered undersized. 5'11", 201. Out there looking similar to Doug Flutie. The running back though. Probably going to be our strongest unit on this offense. The trio is back. Brooke Thompson is back. And my bad, I said that this was the fastest running back on the team, but he's actually not. It's actually Steve Okobasti. Brooke Thompson is back, though. Justin Frankie Beverly and Mays, he's now a sophomore. He's looking to have a big season. Looking to be an All-American again. He was a freshman All-American last season, and he had a stellar season at that. And, of course, we got Steve Urkel Bosick. I'm still tripping over this run right here. This is definitely one of the best runs of this series. 
I was not expecting him to make that play right there. The step back into the crib he went. So Steve Urkobasi comes into this season at 90 overall. Justin Frankie Beverly and Mays comes in at 85 overall. Brooke Thompson comes in at 84 overall. Brooke Thompson is a senior, by the way. And then we have a redshirt freshman from Fairfield, Alabama, by the name of Austin Mason, who starts off at 80 overall. He's the only power back on this squad. Everybody else is a speed back. Every running back on this team could go somewhere else right now and start. They are that good. We have a lot of speed. Mason is the slowest one so far at 85 overall, but he is a power back. He stands at six foot two and weighs close to 230 pounds. We want him to put on another extra six pounds by the next offseason. So there goes Sheldon Money Green. He is back for his senior season. And he's leading a very young wide receiver unit. He's the only senior on this team. And I believe he, I don't think we have a junior on the team. Everybody else is either freshman or sophomore. But Sheldon Money Green is going to be setting the example. But if Green is going to lead this unit, he has to be consistent. Last season, he had an issue with drop passes. That got him benched, but eventually, when he got back on the field, he got his mind right. He made some spectacular plays for us down the stretch of the season, including two big plays in the national championship game. Kevin Humphrey, the six foot nine sophomore out of Bryan, Texas, is looking to come back for a big season so far. So the issue with Kevin Humphrey is the same as Sheldon Money Green. The hands. He's not consistent either. We thought he was going to be spectacular when we bench Sheldon Green for him. But it turned out to be a disappointment. Composure is everything in this game. So with that being said, he and Sheldon Green will be our top two wide receivers. Third in line is a sophomore, Patrick Collier, who caught four receptions last season and three of them went for touchdowns. So here's the depth chart right now. We got Brian Cook in there. We got Cliff Patrick in there. And we also have Ruben Smith in the lineup. But we're still deciding who we're going to red shirt and who's going to be starting. Now, I'm thinking about putting Patrick Collier on the outside. Look at that. He has 99 speed, man. That is crazy. And I'm thinking about putting Humphrey in the slot. Yes, he's 6'9", but he's not fast like uh, Patrick Collier is. We got McCrimmon, who's going to be our starting tight end. We're not going to ignore him. We will give him looks as far as targets. My biggest concern on this offense is the offensive line, man. Like, real talk. Now, remember, we lost four starters. Four of those starters were seniors. Two tackles are gone, and then two guards are gone. We only have one returning starter, and that's our center, Ryan Jones, who is now a redshirt junior. Jeremy Fleming is going to be big this season. He's 90 overall right now. I believe he is our highest rated offensive lineman. Plus, he has experience. There goes Kalechi Powell, who's 90, but he doesn't have the composure that Ryan Jones does, so we're going to make that switch. I believe we have Barnes at right guard. I forgot who I put at right tackle. I believe it was, yeah, that's right, it was Kevin Miller. So we have a young offensive line. They have no composure, and composure is everything in this game. So they need to build together. So here goes the defense. Defensive line, we're going to be way better than we was last season. That's right. We got Rashawn Pearson back. Robert Bates is finally getting his chance to start. Then, of course, we got Anthony Stewart, the number one defensive end in the country, as well as Harvey Lowe. Harvey Lowe's from Nevada. And remember, he was the number one defensive end of the last class before this one. Now, we're going to be doing rotations on the defensive line this season. I want to do something different. We got too much talent for it to just be sitting on the bench rotting. Defensive tackle, though, we're going to be just fine, too. Bobby Swaggart is back. DJ Walker is back. DJ Walker is a 94 overall, our highest rated defensive lineman. But we're looking to wreak havoc up front, man. Interior and exterior. We're looking to bring pressure off the edge like crazy. This is the best our defensive line has looked since the start of this series. We were pretty good last season, but we've gotten better this season. We're deep, and now we can do some nice rotations and confuse the offensive front of the opponents. And on plus on top of that, defensive tackle looks very bright. So, the linebacker spot. Kevin Jackson is coming back. He is a 98 overall. 
He is no doubt our best linebacker, and we are looking for him to lead this squad. Doug McCaleb, who has good speed and size at his position, playing middle linebacker. We got Alfred. He's going to be playing some time, too. Luke Rivera is finally going to get his turn to play. We should be all right at the linebacker spots. My biggest concern, though, is the secondary. Not the cornerback spots, but the safety spots. We're going to have little to no experience at the safety spots. Free safety and strong safety. But Ryan Anderson will be back. He is our highest rated cornerback at, I believe it was 90 overall or was it 89 overall. But that's good. We're going to have Aaron Landrum on the other side. And then our nickelback is going to be Charles Alexander the Great. He did a great job filling in for Aaron Landrum, who got injured. Remember, Aaron Landrum missed just about all of the season up until the national championship game. But Aaron Landrum will be returning this season. He will be starting on the other side of Ryan Anderson. We're not that deep at cornerback, though. We do have two true freshmen coming in. We got both of them in the offseason. So both of them will be in this lineup. Be on the lookout for that. We can't redshirt anybody. We're not that deep at the cornerback spots. So we'll also have to decide who's going to be our kick returner and punt returner. But please believe we will have somebody back there. So these are the free safeties we have. We got Nate Reed. He's going to be starting. We got Jeff Jenkins. He's going to be backing him up. And we're going to redshirt Kenny Richardson. Six foot four. That's good size at free safety. Pause. Booker Reed will be our starting strong safety at 91 overall. Behind him will be Quincy Long at 89 overall. So be on the lookout for them. Join us next time. We're going to show you all the schedule. Thank you for watching. Peace.